All right, hey there. We're in Cromwell Park in Shoreline. Once again, we have water. It's our theme here for this. We've been uh, to Puget Sound. We've been in uh, lakes. We've been at ponds. Now we're in kind of a storm runoff uh, wetlands area. It's actually kind of pretty here. And we're going to work on some conditional proof. Paul? Right. So um, before we started, Mark was commenting that uh, our wa I was commenting that our water theme is kind of uh, washing out here and he pointed out that there's a kind of a slummy little water thing behind well, it's, us. It's, clean, it's, it's a nice. wetland. I wouldn't so, swim in it. No. Yeah. But there is a wetland. So we were commenting that we've been in, we've had as backdrop salt water, fresh water, lakes, ponds, sounds, and now, oh, in swamps, and now wetlands. We need to get some beer, some good ale in the background one of these days. As water? As water. Well, it's a water-based substance. That's true. That's well, there's water-based substance coming down. This is true. It's We're raining again. We're standing in the, in the rain in the last week of May, and it's raining. We've done 75 videos. We're getting giddy. Yeah. But now we'll so do some conditional proof. We're going to uh, help you go over conditional proof in your with with your uh, computer tuned in. So remember that in a conditional proof, you assume, uh, let me back up. When you do a conditional proof, you're trying to prove a conclusion that is conditional in form. So it's of the form if P then Q. Thank you. Remember that the rule essentially says if you can assume the antecedent, of the conditional that you're trying to prove. And using that, excuse me, and using that and one or more of the premises above, if you're able to derive the consequent of that conditional, just the consequent alone, then you may disindent from that indented assumed uh, sequence of lines and assert the conditional itself. So, basically then with a conditional proof, you're trying to prove a P horseshoe, a Q, you, you indent, you assume the P, if you reach the Q, you may assert the entire P horseshoe Q when you uh, disindent. So, so, Mark is going to work this proof, and uh, do you want to write it out or do you want me to? Why don't you write it? You have better All penmanship. Right. I mean, I don't think my penmanship's any better yeah, than good. his, okay. but he wants me to write it. Anyway, I'm looking at the conclusion. And I'm seeing that it's conditional, and that's making me think conditional proof is the way to go. I don't have to use conditional proof, but it almost always will make the proof easier, almost always will make the proof shorter, will almost always end up, I'll end up using easier rules in the process. So it's a really good technique. If my goal is a conditional, and it is, I want to assume the antecedent. That's not a rule, it's just what's going to work. So let's, let's indent and assume W ampersand K. All right, so we indent, we draw the line, and we assume the antecedent, W ampersand K. And I'll write C, AP, AP. And I'll write AP for assume premise. Okay. Now I'm looking for now the does, does this follow from the premises, Mark? No, I'm just pulling this pretty much out of thin it's air. It's out of thin air. I don't know that it's true, but what I want to see is what would follow if it was true. And I, what I'm hoping, and I know it'll take place, if this is true, I'll eventually get D. At that point, conditional proof lets me pull out and say, if this is true, then D is, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So right now, my goal at this very moment is to try to find a D. And I'm going to move forward. First of all, uh, I'm looking at the C, the M. Mm. kind of matches up with that. I'd like to get W and M so that I can do a modus ponens. Mm -hmm. And I can pull a W out using simplification. Mm -hmm. So let's do simplification to get the W. Okay. Simplification yeah. on line four. four. Okay. okay. That'll be line five. All right. And I did that so that I could conjoin W and M to get this thing. I want to do a modus ponens after that. Very far seeing. I am indeed. Four, so, five. So now line six. Six is W and M. When you can join, can you do it in either order? Yeah, I can. I just so we could have gotten this, M and W. I selected this order because that's what I wanted. Okay. So W and M, three M conjunction, conjunction three five, three and five. Okay. Okay. And I did that so that I could do a modus ponens. All right. We'll go ahead. Again, I'm just kind of plugging along, just using the obvious rules as they become apparent, hoping to get a D. 
So P, P horseshoe Q, we're going to win for the Q. It gives me W horseshoe H. Why would I do that? Because modus it's there. Ponens. So modus ponens on one, one and six. And six. Okay. Okay. Well, now that I've got that brand new thing, I see I can do another modus ponens with wow. lines five and seven. That would give me H. So you're noticing the patterns. I'm seeing the pattern there, and I'm also saying that if I can get an H by itself, I can do yet another modus ponens to get the D I'm looking for. See, this illustrates that a lot of the technique in proofs is pattern recognition. Yeah. You know, a lot of what Mark is doing is he's seeing patterns and he's operating off of patterns. It's, okay. Okay, so we do a modus ponens. That would give me H. Regarding the pattern recognition, I find about the 20 years I've been teaching this stuff, most people understand that they're, they're supposed to get from the premises to the conclusion, and, but they'll get stuck and they sometimes get frustrated. Where most people seem to get stuck is they have a hard time seeing patterns. They'll get maybe to this point and it just looks like a mess. Just a bunch of symbols running around, a bunch of letters flooding the page, and the patterns have a hard time emerging. It does get better. Now, I wasn't great at it myself. I know some people get it fast. I don't know how they do it. And some people get it slower. I was kind of middle ground. It, what you want to do is do some practice. Even if you can't finish the proof, practice will help you to see those patterns. Okay. Well, if I may comment on what you said, everyone is good at some things and not so good at other things. Everyone. So uh, some people find this easy and they learn it real quickly and other people struggle with it yeah. have to work a lot harder at it yeah. to be good at But everyone has things they're good at and things they're not good at. I mean, the math whiz, you know, that just aces the calculus exam. There are subjects that he's not or she's not good at. And, and people who struggle with this have other subjects they're good at. So I can't see any patterns to who gets good at pattern recognition fast. No. It's not a male-female thing. No. It doesn't uh -huh. seem to be an age thing. No. It doesn't, you could be an engineer major and still have a hard time seeing patterns. Maybe you hate math and you're a poetry major, yeah. but it turns out to be your, your whiz kid with it. That's true. I, I mean, know. I've noticed that math, math majors don't always uh, find, yeah. find logic easy. So, yeah. And sometimes people that say they're not good at math find logic easy. No, there's a lot of asides, but it's worth saying. Okay. You know, I was looking for a D. I'm going to get one now. I'm going to do a modus ponens with lines two and line eight. That'll give me D. All right. Modus ponens, 2-8. Two, 2-8. Eight. Two and eight. So we got uh, P, horseshoe Q, P, we brought down the Q. Mm -hmm. now, now is that 9? I guess it yeah. is, yeah. So for line 10, I can now say if this is true, if my assumption's true, then this must be true. Given that these are true. Hmm. So my next line is going to move back out, and I'm going to say boldly, and I can know with confidence that if W ampersand K is true, by gum, D would be true. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So... The rule of conditional proof then says if you assumed the antecedent and you reached the consequent, you may assert the antecedent horseshoe the consequent. Yep. That's what you're you saying. No, that's true. Yep. You're asserting W and K horseshoe D. And your justification CP is CP. Four through nine. The indented lines. I'm appealing to the entire four sequence. Through nine. So we've got a dash there instead of a comma. Right. So the justification is these lines here. Do any of these lines follow from the premises? They don't follow, not directly, you because don't. it's based in part on this assumption I'm just pulling out of Which thin air. Which doesn't follow from the so premises. So I don't know that any of these things are true. The only thing I know is, if this is true, then that must be. And that's exactly what I get to say here. If this is true, then that must be. Given the premises are true. Given the premises are true. So in other words, given that the premises are true, that must be true. Yeah. So given that the premises are true, it does not follow that one of these is true, but it does follow that if this is true, this is true. Yeah. So this is a conditional proof. Very good. Yeah. Thank you very much.